Hey everyone, it's uh, the artist formerly known as AYBL uh, Maine. Uh, I kind of changed my uh, uh, name of my channel, so it's a little bit of a change here. It's been a long time since we've got uh, a chance to do a video again, but I'm back here with my buddy Rich and my guy Doc here, uh, Sean Keys uh, from Toronto area, uh, somewhere in there. And uh, everybody's kind of battling different you got it. things and all sorts of stuff. And But we're kind of finally jumping back into our top uh, 12 songs from every particular year. Um, it took us a while to circle back around to this. And I thank the guys for being patient while I worked out a schedule thing for myself. And uh, But now we've got momentum and we're ready to hit it. So we're at 1967. Uh, just a quick review of the, about the rules because it's been so long. We're only picking one song from an album. That, that can be a single that was released from the album or that can be a album cut. You know, if you want to go a little deeper than normal, that's great. Uh, what we've, we've kind of done is we've kind of strove for the time uh, that the uh, single itself was on the charts the most when we pick our years. Uh, sometimes there's some overlap. And obviously, you know, we, we are very lenient about those things because it's supposed to be for fun. Um, also, if, if for some reason an artist released two albums in a particular year, then, of course, you can pick a song from each one of those albums and you can end up with uh, two songs from uh, that particular artist. And I think that actually I may definitely have one of those this year. Uh, so not to give anything away, not, not going to do any spoilers here or anything. So uh, the order this this one for 1967, uh, Rich, you're going to be leading us off and then I'll be batting second, which is usually where they put the, the non hitter anyway. And then uh, Doc's going to do cleanup tonight. So there we go. Rich, Rich, what do you got? <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Great to be back in the saddle again with you guys. It's been a while. Uh Again, six songs on each side. That's correct. I'm going to lead up. I divided my album up into uh, pop, pretty much on uh, side A, and psych or a little heavier music on side B. So, 1967. We're going to lead off with "Incense and Peppermints" by the Strawberry Alarm Clock, Ooh. the number one hit, sort of a yeah. psychedelic pop little gem, uh, one hit wonder, maybe a uh, song that puts you right in the time machine of going back to '67. It takes you to that time and place. And I like some of these lyrics, beatniks and politics, nothing is new, a yardstick for lunatics, one point of view. Who cares what game we choose? Little to win and nothing to lose. It's got that wonderful melody. Yeah. That leads off my album. Number two, Waterloo Sunset by The Kinks. Oh, uh, yeah. Love the song. It's Good a one. beautiful, beautiful song written by Ray Davies. Um, paints a picture, dreamlike, atmospheric masterpiece. Uh, to me, it rivals God Only Knows is one of my favorite songs of the 60s. Oh, wow. A place we can go down there and just let behind all the stress <laughs> and go down to Waterloo Sunset and just sort of vibe out with that kind of feeling. Number three is Happy Together, number one hit by the Turtles. Always loved it. Bubblegum pop, sing along, great harmonies. Uh, it's all over commercials and it's been sung to death, but when I think of 1967, I always think of the Turtles and Happy Together. Wow. Uh, my fourth is a classic, Ruby Tuesday by the Rolling Stones from the Between the Buttons album. I love this song. Great melody again, the lyrics, superb uh, vocal by Mick Jagger about a girl who just can't settle down and with one person. She needs to be free, kind of mysterious girl. She would never say where she came from, all that stuff. And it doesn't matter anymore. Goodbye, Ruby Tuesday. She's off to see somebody else. So love that song. Number five on side A is Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison. Another one that's been beaten to death. But I love Van Morrison in the early period here. Everybody knows this song. It's about being young, making love in the green grass behind the stadium and all that stuff. That was banned for a while. They had to alter the lyrics. Laughing and running, skipping and jumping. Great sing-along song. And then I'm going to end up side a with a classic by the moody blues nights in white satin uh, from the days of future past album justin hayward wrote this sang it and then it's got that late lament poem at the end breathe deep the gathering gloom right. you know, all that stuff <laughs> yes. beautiful song uh, symphonic rock early prog and actually was reissued as a single in 1972 and went to number two on the charts but i'm taking this as an album cut off uh off of that in 67 very uh I, I thought it was a good way to close out out my first side that's, yeah that's a that that's a great song i mean i thought 
it may be the earliest example of symphonic rock because I know it pretty well defined how the Moody Blues were going to sound from almost that point on. Yeah, like everything after that sounded, you know, like that. And it, but yeah. what a, it's a beautiful song, timeless. It's a great tune. Yeah, I echo that with Brian inside there. It's a great song, you know. Um, and you had a couple other good ones on your list. I'll say that right off the bat there, Rich. So thanks. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, great way to start 67 on side A, buddy. Yeah, yeah. side B is <clears throat> going to be a little heavier, a little more psyche because, you know, the summer of love, that was that was the year. And uh, bands start experimenting with drugs a little bit, <clears throat> doing different things. So that's where I'm going on side B. Nice. Nice. Want me to jump in? Yeah, let's jump in. How, how do you lead off side B? This, side know, B, I'm going to lead off with Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze, <laughs> right out of the shoe. <laughs> Psychedelic rock, acid rock, hard rock. It's trippy, you know. Uh, it ushered in a new genre of music. Uh, drugs are a big thing here. People are smoking stuff and popping pills, and I don't know, they haven't gotten to the snort yet because they can't afford it. But once they do, <laughs> look out. Uh, of course, Hendrix, one of the great guitar players, <clears throat> he knocked people on their keisters listening to him. Nobody could play like him, probably before or since. Just no, you know, incredible. And I like that line. Excuse me, like kiss the sky. <laughs> Just a jam. Yeah. My second uh, tune here on side B is White Rabbit, Jefferson Airplane. Uh, a surrealistic pillow. It's got a little Alice yeah. in Wonderland imagery in there, storybook, acid trip, you know, feed your head, all that stuff, hallucinogenics. Uh, I had to put this on the album. I think of Jefferson Airplane in that Summer of Love also. My third one is For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield classic by mm -hmm. Stephen Stills written he wrote that uh a counterculture kind of song police versus the youth out in the LA strip a protest yeah. song and you've seen it in many movies like coming home and forest gump and tropic thunder they always use it on the soundtrack yeah. and it brings you right back to that point uh next up is a whiter shade of pale by Procol Harum <laughs> Gary Brooker just died a few days ago and yeah. what a voice yeah. the organ really drives that song it's kind of haunting and nostalgic another trippy uh kind of vibe that it puts you in a mood you know we skipped the light fandango uh turn cartwheels across the floor i was feeling kind of seasick the crowd called out for more just great lyrics great yeah. music uh next up sunshine of your love by cream great trio power trio of eric clapton jack bruce and ginger baker from the Disraeli Gears album. That's mm -hmm. a blues rock classic, uh, psychedelic masterpiece. Hit number five. It was a you know not only an album track, but it had a, uh, legs as a single as well. Uh, I love this, you know, the opening riff. You know, you know dun, 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 just a classic, but riff. Great riff. A monster, riff. monster great. song. It was. And then I'm going to end uh, my side two or the album in general with the Beatles, of course, A Day in the Life. Great closing track off Sergeant Pepper. And I read the news today. Oh boy, it's basically two songs into one. You got Lennon and then McCartney's coming in and you know the whole the whole thing. They both giving great uh, vocals on this. Definitely drug inspired lyrics. I find my way upstairs and had a smoke. Somebody spoke and I went into a dream. Ah! You know, just that whole thing. <laughs> the gong at the end, and I'd love to turn you on. I'd love you turn you on. just beautiful fantastic so that's how i'm ending it that's that's my uh, 12 songs that's great I and mean, that's such a trippy side compared to your happy go lucky a side because i like <laughs> both styles. i like both styles of music yeah, so i want to represent I mean, yeah white rabbit obviously oh yeah know, spoiler that it'll be on my list somewhere i mean i, <laughs> I kind of assume that it would be on every list if anybody ever made a top anything of 1967 that that track's got to be there you know love it yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, i really saw it uh, it's a great album rich i, I echo what brian said again man it's friggin yeah. uh, it's 1967 of yeah i music, enjoyed uh, making what an era. kind of things and, and eliminating certain there's like 20 songs i had to eliminate which were yeah. monsters too but it is what it is perfect fantastic yeah. All right, I guess it's my turn then. You know, you're up, the you're up Brian. All right, it's, <laughs> and um, so I, I decided. To, you know, I lead off. I, you know, it's funny. I, I I lead off with a Motown track. I mean, even though like it felt like the rest of the year really didn't kind of go in that direction, but 
I wanted to give Aretha Franklin her her respect, and so respect's going to lead off the album for me. I just think yeah, it's like it. one of the most iconic songs in history. I know it was in a you know top five of a lot of a lot of uh, magazines, uh, you know, best songs of all time, and uh, people can always argue about where it's placed. And uh, but it's a timeless track, and I, I love Aretha. I've got a lot of her material, so thought that would be a good way to start it off. Um, track two for me is from my favorite uh, Birds album, which is uh, Younger Than Yesterday. Uh, Everybody's Been Burned. It, it uh, wasn't uh, released as a single, but it's uh, it's an album cut, and I just thought it was a really great song. So it had such a really nice uh, harmony and underlying uh, you know smoothness to it that I just yeah, I just my favorite song by the Birds by a long shot. So and that's probably yeah. saying something. I've listened to a lot of yeah. the Birds material. Dude. So um, number three spot for me is uh, the Young Bloods get together. Uh, you know, I mean, it's another one of those tracks that when you, uh, if you got a war movie that's being put on or some type of, uh, you know, soundtrack to it, usually this is one of the songs that are going to be on that soundtrack along with For What It's Worth by, you know, Buffalo Springfield, it feels like. Um, so it's, it's one of those songs that fit, you know, very well in 1967. Number four for me, I've got, just like Rich, I've got Ruby <coughs> Tuesday. Such a different sounding song from like the blues rock stuff that they were doing in their earlier material. Uh, time signatures a, a lot different. Uh, it's a very smooth type of song for the Stones, and that's probably what attracted it to me so much. I've heard a lot of covers of this song, some that were even done in like uh, classical style, and uh, I I just think that it's one of those songs you can do that with. You can have a heavy metal version of this song. You can have classical versions because that's how good the song is. Um, number five uh, for me is going to be White Rabbit. Uh, Jeff <laughs> Big shout out to Lewis Carroll, even though he's a perv. Uh, <laughs> Alice in Wonderland is one of my great uh, favorite books of all time. I, you know, if you haven't had a chance, you should read the anecdoted, an anecdoted version of Alice in Wonderland. It's filled with you know, crazy puzzles and and things like that that uh, you may not catch as just a, a, a glance reader reader of the material. So. And uh, ending off my side one is going to be Jimi Hendrix with Hey Joe. Uh, nice. his, his cover of that uh, may be my favorite uh, song by uh, Jimmy. I love the whole Are You Experienced album, however. Oh, yeah. And this is just, Fantastic. to me, this is just a masterpiece song. I mean, just grindy, grindy blues guitar and just, you know, just it's great. It's got this wonderful feel to it that I, uh, I really, I'm really sad that I only started listening to him maybe two or three years ago. That's, you know, I should kick myself for that. Let myself go. <laughs> uh, so that's my side one, guys. Kind of kind of all over the place in places, but, you know, I feel like that's what I wanted to do. You got a mix match in there is right, but, I mean, it's a solid mix match, buddy. So it's... Uh, Definitely solid, yeah. I love yeah. the fact that you put Aretha in there, too. Yeah, that's cool. My honorable mentions. I wanted to squeeze her in, and I, I went in a different direction, but she deserves to be uh, right at the forefront of it. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah, very solid. I'd agree there too. Yeah, and Rita, you know, just missed to me is on my honorables as well. And it's, uh, right. I can see how she makes the list, man, for sure. You know, yeah, she does. she's got a lot of albums coming, obviously. I don't yeah. know if a lot of her tracks will make it. I mean, uh, but still, I, I just one. thought this one should be, you know, yeah. So, and I like White Rabbit too, of course. I, yeah, obviously, right. that's, uh, that's, yeah. that's perfect. Uh, okay, so, so for side two, a uh, little bit. A little bit wackier, maybe like Rich's here in a way. I started off with uh, The Doors, Break On Through, uh, you know, from their debut album. Uh, debut. Yeah, it's just got a really in in interesting sound to it. I mean, nothing like The Doors had ever really kind of sprung out there before. And it was kind of that nice mixture of uh, rock and psychedelic stuff that, you know, and uh, very uh, heady lyrics in places and throughout the album. And Break On Through was just like this great, great track that i thought would would lead off the second side really well so trying to keep it a little trippy i went with dear mr fantasy from traffic um definitely a trippy song and steve winwood's voice is just uh <laughs> just trippy in this, man. Man. I just feel like yeah yeah I, I could see how he was definitely stoned throughout the recording of this <laughs> really great. uh love it though i mean it, I've, I've gone on the list fantastic of other albums and it's just this is a fantastic tune it's definitely yeah, one, yeah. one for the 70s. 
Uh, number three, I got another Hendrix because he released two albums. He had Axis, uh, Bold as Love also. Right. Released. So I had Little Wing. Uh, you know, maybe a, I may maybe considered a deeper cut from the album, but I think it, it's popular. A lot of people have uh, oh, yeah. had it on sure. some lists and stuff, but uh, really, really love Jimmy. And I actually uh, like Bold as Love just a smidge better than All You Experience. And that may be like, you know, a very bold statement. Well, that, that could be the take, buddy. That yeah, could that could be the hot take of the <laughs> night. But I don't know. I, that's just a preference. You know, I've listened to all of the sure. stuff and... Uh, uh, at least, I, at least I like Jimmy now. I like all of his stuff, so it's cool. I went with uh, for my uh, uh, fourth track. I went uh, to the blues uh, side of things because I'm a big blues fan. We listen to a lot of stuff. I got uh, Albert King's "Born Under a Bad Sign." Uh, whole yeah. album is Oof. fantastic. If you're into blues, it's like one of those top five uh, blues albums that everybody has to listen to before they die. This uh, probably "Moaning in the Moonlight." Um, by Howlin' Wolf and then maybe Muddy Waters at Newport 1960 uh, you know would be among those three but this one is definitely in the top five of albums you should listen to for blues before you die if you get a chance great album that's a fantastic tune you know the title track from it so check it out uh, number five for me is going to be the box tops the letter um, song, oh, great tune songs only a little under two minutes long but man what a powerful two minutes they just pack it all in there it's a great sound, uh, you know. The very catchy, catchy as hell, man. Catchy, catchy as hell, hell, man. You just you're gonna roll with it as soon as you're into the song. You're just gonna roll with it. It's a great song. I uh, couldn't leave it out of there. And ending my side two was was the song that ended uh, Rich's side one. I got Nights in White Satin by the Moody Blues. Oh, I thought, wow. I, I thought it would be a good bookend track to end the album with. Yeah. Um, really, indic like I said before, indicative of that symphonic rocks uh, that uh, would come further in their career and uh, other people would kind of play off of uh, the sounds that they they made and uh, textures that they made with their music. Mixing, you know, orchestra with rock music uh, wasn't like highly thought of at the yeah. time. And these guys, I think they got the ball rolling. So that's my side, too. Fantastic. Well, hey, I love the letter. It, it was the one that I had the hardest time cutting of all of them, but it didn't fit into my complete pop or complete psych. It was sort of a, it wasn't a, a popular hit, but it had a little edgier, throaty, uh, soulful voice to it. So yeah. I wanted it. I'm glad you had it because it, it yeah, deserved so my it. It was a really late cut for me on that. The, the letter was, song. to be honest with you, it's probably my last cut. That yeah. and respect are probably two and yeah. Uh, Rich, your cream on song there is uh, also I'm a late sure cut, well. and so was nice and white satin for me. So maybe I'm giving away too much, but yours is very diverse too, Brian. Uh, I, I like that part of the album a lot, actually. Yeah, um, I'm glad I try to throw things in there that are definitely maybe just me, but I think that's part of it, right? It's like that's, that's exactly what we're doing, man. Right. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. You got to add a little bit of your own little essence to the to the album. You know what what makes you tick musically, and that's what you're doing. So that's cool. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Awesome. Doc, you are batting cleanup, my man. What we got going That's on? a lot of pressure at Sean's house in 1967, man. Come on <laughs> in. Let's go downstairs. Crank out some tunes. Here we go. We'll jump right in. Side A. First one you're going to hear coming into my place. It's uh, one that uh, Brian had already touched on already. So it's, uh, it's Traffic's Dear Mr. Fantasy for me as well. So nice. yeah, Steve Winwood, man, is... Uh, Got a great voice, man, too, and a really talented dude for a long, long time. Overlooked in a lot of respects, too, so I think um, yeah. outside of mainstream stuff. But if you uh, – Steve Winwood's brilliant, man, so uh, – and this tune's fantastic. You know, you're right. As soon as you hear that first like, guitar, man, damn it, you, you hear that first guitar, you know, <laughs> you're, you're into dear Mr. Fantasy, man, and you're going for a ride. It's a great tune. Uh, so now jump into my, my – Second tune, my follow-up tune, the Dear Mr. Fantasy is going to be the Stones. She's a rainbow. Oh boy. Uh, wow, that's man, good. this is another really. I, I like those catchy tunes here in the sixties, man. I just yeah. uh, some of these hooks just get you, and it's you know the piano and the way it sounds. Mix sounds fantastic, and uh, I, I just get hooked on these things, man. That piano, it's like, like I mean, yeah, uh, sure. on my notes it's got that mm. that sting feel almost to it later on in life you know you can almost see where they get it from so it's uh yeah, she's a rainbow is a fantastic stones too and maybe one that doesn't get talked about enough in the scheme of things too so i agree uh, my number three 
We got the trifecta, boys. It's the Jefferson Airplane, man. Let's do the White Rabbit, man. Let's go. <laughs> <So>. Awesome. <laughs> uh, um, I don't remember if it was Rich or Brian. One of you guys mentioned it there earlier, saying if you don't have the song on your list in 1967, then yeah, I don't know, man. You're you were missing the tunes. This this is a this is a must off this list, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, I just uh, the build up in this song. I, um, I just love the build up. If I go with my notes on this one, it's it's a song that I don't want to end. It just really is. I just wish we could keep on going because the build up in it just keeps on going. No, there's no, oh, I wish there's no crescendo in this song. I just wish we could keep on going. It'd be great. But uh, White Rabbit's a classic, classic song. Uh, song from the 70s, man. A real, we say stoner tune, I guess, but a classic tune. So, yep. Number four. Small faces, man. Ichiku Park. Love that one. Wow. Man, I got the, I got some, I got some sort of vibe going here, right? So I guess yeah. I don't know. This must be the psychedelic side. I'm going for sure. I guess. So. Right. <laughs> uh, never guess what this one's about, but you know, uh, that was another one, man. That's another. It's a real catchy tune. Again, it's really the, the drums in this song. It's uh, Small Faces, another band that you know gets lumped into like you know bands from the '60s, late '60s, early '70s, and floats out to different things, but. A lot of these guys have a lot of talent, man, and uh, there was just a lot of music at this time too to absorb. And you know, the upper echelon guys really did take off. There's a lot of other guys that uh, put out a lot of good music too at this time. So, it's a good park, man. It's my number four. Number five. Happy these guys made my list because here they come. And as far as I know, they're going to be on my list for the next 15, 20 years. I don't know how this is going to go, but it's Pink Floyd. <laughs> wow. See Emily play. See Emily. Uh, and, it's an, and these catchy tunes, carnival like sounding almost, but you know, you can see where Floyd was going pretty early on this stage here, aside of everything else. This is 1967 Floyd, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is progressive rock, uh, early, early stages, you know, molded, let's say, a little with, you know, uh, different things going on in different bands, but you can see how guys are going to start to evolve. And this is really, uh, a great stepping stone on where they're going to go into the seventies here, I think is uh, a couple of songs off of this, this album at this time and could have gone a couple of ways, but Sam Lee plays a classic uh, early Floyd tune in my eyes. So right around then is when we ordered the pizza. And then uh, before, we, before we finish off side A, I guess we're going to have uh, Jimmy uh, finishing off and uh, going back with uh, when one Rich has earlier too. So I'm going purple haze as well. So nice. Nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jimmy's Jimmy, man. You could have had a few. There's three songs, really, that could have made my list here for Jimmy at this time, maybe four. So uh, Purple's always been a, a top-notcher for me, man. It's maybe my favorite Jimmy tune. So uh, that's why I'm ending up my side A. Nice. Awesome. I like how you have Purple Haze, one of my tunes. You have one of Brian's songs on there in... Uh, Dear Mr. Fantasy. Dear Mr. Yeah. Fantasy. And then you have one we all have in White Rabbit. White Rabbit. So, and I love Ichiku Park. That's a great addition. I'm thrilled I, with that one because yeah. that's so 67 and totally you're all so beautiful, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think what, maybe the one that stands out to me that I least expected was, and and I mean, maybe uh, it, if, I, if I think closer to who you actually are, but it, the one that's definitely you is C. Emily Play. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the one yeah. that kind of caught me where I go, well, yeah, that's definitely Doc. That's not yeah. Doc picking right. a song that he thinks everybody thinks should be on the list. That's Doc picking Doc right. song, you know? That's right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you saw it that way, Brian, because that's, that's yeah. exactly what it is, right? You know, I like to think that that's my list, and uh, yeah, I'm not lying if, you know, if we go to Crash Years and Floyd has an album out and I don't have a Floyd song on there, then I'm not in the video. That's my <laughs> guess. <laughs> 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 yeah, I guess that's a little foreshadowing for you know I guess some 70s stuff that's going to come out so but I guess if we jump into the side B I guess if we it's do time. it right now it's time we can uh, start it off right away with our second trifecta I guess it's uh, the Stones uh, so thank God they had the singles and the releases so I can get the, a couple of Stones albums in there for me so that's mm -hmm. good but it's Ruby Tuesday oh, yeah. excellent uh, uh, Stones have a lot of classic tunes man and here, here's another good one so uh, another classic you want the truth and yeah it's got that dreamy kind of vibe to it you know, but, you know yeah again nick sounds fantastic you know and he does yeah 
just the way the flow in it, you know, and you know, the course is the course and stuff like that, but you could sing that at any time, any place. And it's uh, Brian, I think you touched on it. It could be like in a classical setting or it could be like in a heavy metal setting. Uh, the tone of the song, I don't think would change. It was just how it'd be delivered. The actual Ruby Tuesday is just, you could hear it in India from way, I think, and it'd still be Ruby Tuesday. So great call, I think, uh, on both your parts as well. And that's a classic song in my eyes for especially 67. Yeah. Rich, got to give you the shout out, buddy, there. So that uh, Waterloo Sunset for the Kinks, man, is coming into my, uh, oh, yeah. my second song there, too, man. Nice. That's, um, what a classic talk, man. Uh, it's such a, uh, the harmonies and everything else in this song. It's, uh, you know, Davies is another one that, you know, the Kinks are the Kinks, man, you know, and you, you like the Kinks, you love the Kinks, you, you know, you, you forget about the Kinks. You know, maybe that happens too often. Kinks are awesome awesome band especially at this time man for, yes. and they go on a run man they can pop into the 80s too so uh waterloo sunset just a classic tune man uh, definitely making my top 12 and 67 number three i guess an indirect shout out to rich because i also have proko harm on my list too <laughs> but it's not white or shade of pale man so it's uh maybe my favorite tune from them it's homburg um This one is just, you know, I, I'm finding like we talked about the things as we go, but, you know, I like some of these deeper cuts or, you know, second or third or fourth cuts from some of these bands as we go along and stuff like that. So this would be in that neighborhood. Proco Harlem's a different kind of vibe even at this time. You know, they don't really fit the mold for anything going on in 67 in one sense. Oh. You know, Whiter Shed of Pale doesn't fit the mold of 67. And this is what you find out from them, especially as you move along. So, but that vibe they do have, man, is it ever freaking good. So... Homburg's a fantastic tune, man. Fantastic. And you can see how they have influences on people moving into the early 70s. Alice Cooper, Via, whatever. You can see it in a whole bunch of different kinds of music. That's my take anyway. But that's my third, my fourth. Rich, man. We had the same bands again, man. It's Buffalo Springfield, but you know, you picked the wrong tune again, man. So, sorry. I have a habit of doing that. No, no, no. <laughs> Your tune's fine, man. Don't worry about that jazz. So, but Mr. Soul for me, man. Um, yeah, great one another great tune yeah and this one that one right back to that catchy kind of thing that i really get hooked into when i'm when it gets you you're at um well hello mr yeah you start yeah, you put in your head man and right. before you know it, you're uh now we're all singing it so sorry but it's uh it's one of those songs that stick for me from especially that era and it's uh kind of a classic song and i love it up to these days there's great renditions of it even some live ones that are fantastic but you know so Yep. Mr. Saul's number four, man. Number five. You know, let's probably go back on something Brian said earlier. So I have a Who song on my list, Brian. So um, go figure. I can see for miles, man. Uh, <laughs> it's a, yep. Yeah, it's a great tune, man. Yep. Great tune. Had to make my list, man. I mean, I cut some other classic songs off of these things, but just because it's my basement, man. This is what you're going to hear. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can see for miles. It's a classic Who song. The Who has a lot of classic songs in my eyes. So, uh, pretty high up my list of where the rankings happen in in music. So, uh, the Who's coming in, man. Finishing off my album sounds a lot like Rich again, man. <laughs> it's a day in the life, man, with the Beatles. So, right, Andrew. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's. You're right. Uh, I think you touched on it. You, you brought it up really well, I think, you know, the, the John side and the Paul side and everything else. And I really don't know if they sounded any better than they do, maybe even in this song, yeah. you know, ever. Um, it says, well, obviously, that says a, an abundance and that's what you feel about the song. But uh, it's kind of the way I do feel about the song, man. This is this is an all-timer. And uh, that's why I'm ending up my 67, man, with the classic. It's a classic. Way to go. Nice. I love it. Yeah, I mean, go. again, I I think there's I, there's a, there's songs there that I definitely know are Doc songs. You you just say Proko Haram, I'm going Doc, and that, yeah. and that's you kind of know. That's if you say the Who, I'd be like, well, it's definitely Doc, Doc's definitely got that. Yeah. Rich probably, yeah. and then you know maybe even me probably, but D Doc definitely has it. If they the Who had a song that year, Doc's got it somewhere. So, <laughs> so, cool, yeah, I like it. And then and Day in the Life, Day in the Life was a. A last minute cut for me. I mean, definitely was on that list for a while. And it's all about did it fit? You know, just like Rich said, how it molds this is does it fit? 
you know, and then yeah. doesn't mean it's not a good song. It just means that you just didn't vibe with the things I had on the sides. And yeah, so, but I like it. I like the, I like all, I like all the lists. And I'm glad we had a trifecta on two songs, uh, two very well deserving songs. Pretty well deserving good. songs too. It's pretty good for three of us to get two songs out of this particular year. Right. Great. Absolutely. Can I throw yeah, a couple? We have a lot of uh, yeah, that, yeah. Can we hear some honorable mentions real quick? I just want to run through a bunch that just I have to single out. Uh, respect, of course, we mentioned in yeah. the letter. I also like to love somebody by the Bee Gees, early Bee Gees. You don't know what it's I love that song. Uh, let, uh, Let's Live for Today by the Grassroots. I had a couple of monkey songs in here. Pleasant Valley Sunday and I'm Not Your Stepping Stone. Beatles, Penny Lane, Strawberry Fields Forever and All You Need Is Love. Ode to Billy Joe by Bobby Gentry, which is a yeah, classic song. I uh, love it. And uh, Light My Fire by The Door, Somebody to Love by Jefferson Airplane, and uh, Sweet Soul Music by Arthur Conley, another soul tune. That's what I have is the ones that came closest to making it for me. Doc, what about Very you? Very good. Very good. I had uh, Somebody to Love. That was a late cut for me as well yeah. from Jefferson. Uh, it's a great song as well. Uh, I also had Respect, Nights of White Satin. Um, your Buffalo Springfield song, your other one, Rich, when I came down to which one I was picking. So I was like, for what, what it's worth, worth uh, yeah. and, right. uh, Mr. Soul. So uh, those would be the standouts for me. But uh, and the, the Aretha one was, you know, and the letter too, buddy. The, so letter, the, letter, man, was, the, the letter. letter was my last cut. So I me can't too. say it was. That's uh, a great call. I'm glad, I'm glad it was on somebody's list. I'll say that because it, it probably deserve it does deserve to be represented in 67, probably yeah. at some level for sure. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had Day in the Life, I had Proko Harum and Ichiku Park. They were all on oh, there, cool. and, and it's just a, what do you do? I mean, it's just it's something you gotta go, <laughs> yeah. and it is what it is. And you um, pray for a double album, is what you do. And we yeah, don't have it. Yeah, and we, <laughs> we'll be solving we'll be solving that problem very very soon. So very uh, soon. Cool. All right. Um, so I mean, uh, you know, that's 1967. I mean, we kind of jumped back into that kind of nice, and it went very smoothly. Uh, I just a reminder to everybody out there too that we will be continuing this. I uh, try to release videos. Uh, you know, every every week at least. I mean, we're probably going to try to bang a couple out here in the next uh, ten days. So, I'll be looking for 1968 relatively soon. Um, also, uh, Rich here has his own channel, Rich Strickler. Um, I'll put a link down below to that channel, so you should definitely check him out. He does his own material. Does he does a sports uh, a segment along with Doc? I believe they actually do some stuff together as well. Um, and then Rich does some album reviews and he'll do uh, uh, contest entries and top tens and uh, various things. So you should definitely check it out. Uh, got a great uh, got a great perspective and knowledge of uh, the 1960s and 70s for sure. So, I mean, it's a great channel for him. Um, Doc, we don't know what he does in his basement yet. We're still trying no. to figure that out. No. But, uh, you know, we're, we see Something incandescent cute. lighting and he's talking about, you know, getting high a lot. That's all we can do. <laughs> <laughs> i've lived a life man i've lived a life <laughs> but we really appreciate you everybody watching out there uh like i said look for our re regular videos coming very soon and uh we'll catch you guys on the other side thanks again rich thank you thank you again to doc and uh thanks brian see you guys in 1968 all right sounds good there. okay <laughs>